Hello, I'm Barry Collins and I'm here with PC Pro's contributing editor, John Honeyball, and we're going to talk about Windows XP migration in business. And John, I guess pff, at the turn of the century when we started writing about XP, we had no idea it was going to last this long. Um, true, um, although um, XP gets a bit of a bad rap these days um, because there's people like Microsoft saying you must get off it as if it's some sort of nuclear platform that's about to explode in your face. The truth of the matter is that XP was fantastic for businesses. Um, it was a manageable platform, it was secure at the time, in the world that we lived in at the time, and we knew how to use it, we knew how to manage it, we knew how to set it up, we knew how to deploy it by the tens of thousands. And it was fantastic, and uh, an awful lot of business has been done on the XP platform. So it's not hard to see why an awful lot of business have said, have said if it's not broke, don't change it. Now, of course, there is the whole issue about support running out recently, and what does that actually mean in real terms for the business customer? So what are the dangers of staying with Windows XP now? Well, Microsoft says you must get off this, it's turned nuclear, there's no more fixes, although they did rather um, confusingly do one release of some bug fixes to, to IE a few weeks ago. Um, the truth of the matter is that uh, it's all about risk assessment. And we have to consider this in the context of what are actually people doing on XP today and why are they doing it. For example, some people are still on XP just because that's what they've got, especially in the smaller business end um, where they've got a, a number of machines in an office, they don't have any technical competency and they don't want to have any technical competency. This is what was fitted years ago, it still works for them, why should they change? The problem here in my mind, is actually not really XP. The problem is more the hardware. Because you're looking here at hardware that's seven to 10 years old. And that means it's getting into fairly unpleasant places in terms of its uh, uh, reliability, uh, hard disk failures, power supply capacitor failures, and so forth. And therefore, the risk actually, I suspect, for a lot of business users is more about the hardware imploding than Windows XP actually imploding. Um, especially if they're doing sensible type of web browsing behind uh, good firewalls and they've got good antivirus and anti-malware and so forth in place, then I'm not in any way suggesting that the risk is zero and I'm not suggesting that they wouldn't be better off on Windows 7 or Windows 8, but I wonder whether the hardware is actually the bigger risk at that point. And if you're still on that age of hardware, you absolutely should be moving off of it. You've paid for it years ago, it's been depreciated to zero and new hardware uh, on a desktop machine for a desktop user is only a few hundred pounds here. What is the problem? Some people are saying you can make a Windows XP machine safe simply by dis disconnecting it from the network or the internet. Do you, do you buy that? Well, if you're talking here about um, internet-based threats, then obviously disconnecting from the internet means you're not going to have those threats. Uh, you're not going to have malware come down attached to email. You're not going to be web browsing to sites that maybe have got nasty code in them because you're disconnected from the internet. Uh, that's certainly true. However, that hasn't fixed the underlying risk of the hardware imploding. John Honeywell, thanks very much.